So you just bought yourself a brand new MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro or even just a regular 12 inch MacBook, brand new or used, it doesn't matter. Uh, these are some of my top choices in terms of the first accessories that you should be getting right away for your brand new MacBooks. Links in the description for everything that I'm talking about in this video. So grab some snacks, sit back, relax, and here's all the best accessories that I would recommend buying right away for a brand new MacBook. Okay, so the first thing that I always get when buying a brand new Mac is actually Apple Care. It's actually better than you'd think. So you get two extra years of warranty, so you get three years in total, and Apple Care has actually been a lifesaver for me in so many cases. With my 2016 MacBook Pro, I've had so many issues with that thing. The speakers failed like twice, not even joking. I had some GPU problems, the display, uh, actually the body was popping like crazy, the keyboard was horrible, yeah, a lot of keys failed. So I had the thing repaired so many times, and in the end, Apple gave me a brand new 2017 MacBook Pro. It took them about a year to, you know, do that change. But yeah, that was fixed in the end after so many phone calls and repairs. With my brand new 2018 MacBook Pro with Apple Care, my MacBook is actually covered up until 2021. So, you know, in case my MacBook breaks in 2021 and Apple cannot fix it, they would give me a brand new 2021 MacBook Pro. That's their policy. So Apple Care is, I would say, a must if you plan on buying a brand new Mac and you, you plan on using it for a few years. And then there's also Apple Care Plus now, which gives you cover for up to two accidental damages. So if you break your display, for example, or you drop your MacBook, and you know the case actually gets bent or damaged uh, you just pay an access fee of around 80 pounds I believe instead of over a thousand pounds which is what you would normally pay for Apple to fix such damage now something that was really cool back in the day of glowing Apple logo MacBooks were the stickers that you could buy for the Apple logo on the back and it gave your Mac a bit of personality I remember getting one for my 11 inch MacBook Air I got a Batman sticker and it actually looked really really cool the Apple logo was of course glowing back then so pretty much all the stickers take advantage of this uh, and there were actually some really cool designs some amazing designs that you could get so if you have an older MacBook that's a great way to customize yours and I mean some designs actually still look great even with the next generation the new generation of MacBooks another crucial thing that you should get as soon as you get your brand new MacBook especially if you have one that just comes with USB type C ports is of course a USB type C dock so this is the one that I personally use it's made by a company called Hutu so it connects to just a single USB type C port and it gives you three USB 3.0 no ports, one SD card slot, another USB Type-C port on the back in case you're using this with a 12-inch MacBook and you know you want some power input as well. And finally we also get an HDMI port uh, which can do up to 4K at 30 Hz. Now there are some other better and newer adapters out there. For example there's this one from Sateki uh, which attaches to the side of your MacBook Pro and it also comes in space gray so it matches the color of a MacBook really really nicely and it also gives you a few extra ports compared to the Hootsie one plus a Thunderbolt output port since you know this one actually occupies both of your Thunderbolt world 3 ports which i find to be a very big downside to be honest but yeah it's a really good alternative actually the best one to the hutu dog that i have so yeah, in case you're interested in that or this, both of them are linked in the description. And if you're traveling a lot and you have a brand new MacBook with a USB Type-C port, did you know that you can actually charge it from an external battery? So I've got this 21,000 mAh battery from Anchor. Now my model does not have a USB Type-C port, but this one, this newer model, actually does. So you can use this thing to charge your MacBook while you're on the go. A 12-inch MacBook would work with this, even the MacBook Air. Now the MacBook Pros would only charge as long as they're not being used. So if they're in sleep, uh, they can be charged from the external battery otherwise since they're you know more powerful computers uh, when used they would actually discharge faster than what the battery can charge them now in case you use your computer to actually make a living out of which let's be honest that would be most people uh, literally the most useful thing to get is a monitor having a monitor can boost your productivity by a lot and if you have a new MacBook the best monitor that you can get is one that has a USB type C port and that's not just because you can easily connect and disconnect with just one cable but also because it would automatically uh, connect connect you to all the other accessories and the port that it has on the back. You know, you simply connect one cable and boom, you have access to everything, plus it will also charge your MacBook. And if you want the best monitor that you can get, that would actually be the LG Ultrafine 5K monitor. Now, it's not an inexpensive monitor by any means, it's really crazy expensive actually, but it does have the same 5K panel as in the 5K IMAX. It's also a 10-bit panel and connects via Thunderbolt 3. So yeah, if you have a 12-inch MacBook actually, it wouldn't work with that. Now in case you're looking for something a bit more affordable, the best option here is the LG 27UD88. So uh, it's a 4K panel, IPS as well, and it also comes with a USB Type-C port 
and it costs a third of what the LG Ultra Fine 5K monitor costs. But if you have any other 4K monitor without the USB Type-C port, chances are that you're either using it in 4K 30Hz via an HDMI cable or you're using it in 4K 60Hz but you're using a display port to Thunderbolt 3 adapter. Well, an even better accessory to get is actually USB Type-C to DisplayPort cable, so this one includes the adapter tech inside ahead of the DisplayPort part. So yeah, there you go, you've just turned your DisplayPort monitor into one that has a USB Type-C port with this. And if you have multiple Macs with a Thunderbolt 3 port, honestly guys, get a Thunderbolt 3 cable. So just simply get the 0.5 meter one, that's the only one that you need. Uh, and with this you can get some insane transfer speeds between two of your Macs. Uh, whether you want to use this as a server, I mean one of the Macs as a server or an ingestation station for all of your footage if you're a video editor, do get a Thunderbolt 3 cable, you won't regret it. And something that I recently got for my MacBook Pro is actually a stand. So this is the rain stand and it matches the color of my MacBook Pro perfectly. The idea here is that not only can you use this to raise your MacBook Pro and have a keyboard and a mouse below it for a much more ergonomic setup, but you can even use this next to a proper monitor and you know raise the monitor and make a desktop setup out of it. So there's a cable management system, more of like a hole, uh, and you can manage all of your cables through that. So yeah, it's, it's pretty neat and I do love mine. Speaking of turning your MacBook into a desktop setup, aside from a monitor and a stand, something that can greatly impact your setup is actually an external graphics card or an eGPU. You can use this with any MacBook Pro Pro with a Thunderbolt 3 port, so 2016 models and newer, the MacBook Air as well, the new one, uh, the new 2017 iMacs, as well as the iMac Pro, as well as the new Mac Mini. Literally all you need is an eGPU enclosure, but don't waste your time buying the Apple one because it's really expensive and you cannot upgrade it, and it only comes with a Radeon RX 580 anyway, so it's weak. The best option is actually the uh, Razer Core X eGPU enclosure. Uh, it's actually the most inexpensive one, and it also comes with a pretty powerful 650 watt power supply. I've connected my Vega 64 GPU to it. By the way, guys, use an AMD GPU. Uh, they actually work perfectly on macOS. They're instantly recognized and you get perfect integration with apps such as Final Cut Pro 10. And you'll also get a massive performance boost for things such as gaming. If you want to do that, you can actually do it. 3D modeling as well. So yeah, especially if you have a MacBook Air or a 13 inch MacBook Pro, both of which are Mac mini, all of which do not come with the dedicated GPU. Going back to traveling, one of my favorite cases is this one from Inatech. So it's very comfy and it fits your MacBook perfectly. Uh, what you don't want to do is get a case with a zipper because it can actually damage your MacBook uh, like it has in my case and this one does not have any zippers. Uh, you can also pick Apple's own case but that's almost 200 pounds, actually 200 pounds, it's crazy expensive uh, but this is this is the most premium feeling case that you can buy and it also fits your MacBook like a glove. Now something else that you'll also find extremely useful when traveling is this 60 watt MacBook charger from RAF Power. so it gives you a USB Type-C port that you need to charge your MacBook as well as four USB Type A ports for charging things such as you know an iPhone, an Apple Watch, and more, all in the same power adapter. Now this model cannot charge a 15-inch MacBook Pro, but it can charge a 12-inch MacBook as well as a MacBook Air, as well as in some cases a 13-inch MacBook Pro slowly, since it can only do 45 watts of power. Another tip that I have is to get a USB Type-C to Lightning cable but that's not actually for connecting your iPhone to your Mac, but instead for connecting your iPhone or iPad to your Mac's power adapter in order to charge those devices really, really fast. So you can charge an iPhone 50% uh, in just 30 minutes, which is insane. Honestly, get that cable, you won't regret it, especially if you have a Mac. And if you plan on doing any video editing on your MacBook Pro on the go, the best thing to get is actually a fast external SSD. And the best one by far is the Samsung X5 Thunderbolt 3 M.2 drive. So this one has write speeds of up to 2.8 gigabytes per second. So it's crazy fast, but it's also crazy expensive. So if you're looking for something a bit more affordable, then the Samsung T5 is the second best choice. It's USB Type-C uh, SSD with speeds of up to 500 megabytes per second. And in case you need even more storage, even faster storage, you can go the NAS route and get the QNAP TV 1282T3. So this is a Thunderbolt 3 NAS with up to 80 terabytes of storage. You get SSD base as well as M.2 support. So in total, you get speeds of up to uh, of about two gigabytes per second, which is insane. So yeah, 80 terabytes at two gigabytes per second that you can access from anywhere you want in the world since, you know, this is actually a full server. That's insane. Literally the best tool for video editors. So that's something that you should get if you're a video editor. And if you are a video editor or an audio editor, you need some really good headphones. And the ones that I actually got recently are the Audio-Technica M50Xs with Bluetooth. So 
Uh, there are mainly studio monitors, but these ones are actually pretty good for listening to music as well, so they're not as flat as the M70Xs. And with Bluetooth, you can connect them to anything, including your phone. However, if you're not into uh, over-the-head headphones, you can always get a pair of Apple AirPods. So these are perfect if you have multiple Apple devices, such as an iPhone, an Apple Watch, and so on, since you can easily switch the audio input between them. And finally, I know that Macs have the best trackpads on the market on any laptop, but you should honestly get a mouse. It's so much more comfortable than using a trackpad, and you'll work so much faster by using one. But macOS heavily relies on gestures, so you kind of need the trackpad as well, don't you? Well, not really. The best mouse that you can get right now is the Logitech MX Master 2S, and it actually supports all the gestures in macOS that a trackpad does. And it comes in space gray, so it perfectly matches your MacBook and the space gray Apple keyboard and the trackpad. You can connect it via Bluetooth or the receiver, and it's by far the most comfortable mouse that I've ever used. So yeah, you can use this for work that you do on your Mac, including gaming, so you can even use this for gaming. So yeah, overall, this is my favorite mouse by far. Highly, highly recommended. But yeah, the links for everything that I mentioned are in the description, and if you purchase anything, you also support a channel. So Amazon gives us a small uh, part of their profit, it's a small 1% percentage or so, uh, and you don't have to pay anything so Amazon gives us something from their profits so you don't have to pay anything by simply using the links below and that's it um, and yeah let me know in the comments what accessories are you actually using for your MacBook anything that I haven't talked about anything interesting that maybe you want me to mention in a future video do a like if I enjoyed it let me know and also like if you want me to make some similar videos in the future uh, I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next video so tech signing out cheers